Pre-trib rapture moment number 22. Question. Are you afraid? Are you afraid of what is coming to this earth? Luke chapter 21 verses 23 or verse 25 we'll read here it says and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations and with perplexity the sea and the waves roaring men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken is there going to be fear in the time of Jacob's trouble yes when the world realizes that God himself is pouring out his wrath on the earth, you better believe there's going to be some fear. But uh, what does the Bible say for Christians? 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Now, how can a Christian not feel fear when they know that God is raining down his wrath, his judgment on the earth? How could you go through that time and not feel any fear? Especially with the possibility of taking the mark of the beast and losing your salvation and facing God's wrath for, for eternity. Not just for seven years, but for eternity. You mean to tell me that you would go into that time period and just, la 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 la, I'm not afraid of anything, you know, as the water turns to blood and as a third of all the people die and a third of the trees are burned up and there's all this war and death and everything you could go through the whole time period there and not fear you see the problem this is creating here if the body of christ goes into that time we certainly would fear and we would be fearing the one who's pouring out his judgments on the earth fearing god fearing his judgment doesn't line up doesn't line up but what's the context of luke chapter 21 verses 25 through 26 the thing about men's hearts failing them for fear What's the context? Verse 20. And when she, when ye shall see um, Pennsylvania. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't read that right. Uh, Maine. Arizona. Texas. The United States of America. The UK. Uh, Australia. Germany. Oh, no, it, actually it says uh, Jerusalem. When ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains and let them which are in the midst of it depart out and let not them that are in the countries enter thereinto. For these be the days of vengeance that all things that which are written may be fulfilled. But woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days for there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people. What people? What's the people? The Jews. For a eight millionth time, the Jews. Watch my other pre trib rapture moments. The time of Jacob's trouble is about Jacob. I know that's hard to figure out. It's about the Jewish people. That's why there's distress and wrath upon this, this people. In context, it's talking about the Jews. It is not talking about members of the body of Christ. Verse 24. <laughs> And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 7 through 11 says, Alas for that day is great so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. For it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck, and will burst thy bonds, and strangers shall be no more serve themselves of him. But they shall serve the Lord their God, and David their king, whom I will raise up unto them. Therefore fear thou not, O my servant Jacob. Saith the Lord, neither be dismayed, O Israel, for lo, I will save thee from afar, and thy seed from the land of their captivity. And Jacob shall return, and shall be in rest and be quiet, and none shall make him afraid. This is after the time of Jacob's trouble. Verse 11, For I am with thee, saith the Lord, to save thee, though I make a full end of all nations, whither I have scattered thee. Yet will I not make a full end of thee, but I will correct thee in measure, and will not leave thee, to leave thee altogether unpunished. Is there going to be a country of America in the time of Jacob's trouble? No. Well, I'm sorry, there'll, it'll be there, but will there, I, let me rephrase that. Will there be a country of America after the time of Jacob's trouble? No. Is there going to be the UK? No. 
Germany, no. Australia, no. France, no. Spain, no. On and on and on. No. All the nations are finished in the time of Jacob's trouble. The times of the Gentiles is fulfilled. It's completed. It's done. God's not going to deal with all the nations anymore. Only one nation, the nation of Israel. That's where Jesus Christ returns and sets up his earthly kingdom. From Jerusalem. Okay? That's the center of God's attention in the time of Jacob's trouble. It's not the Gentile church that's spread out all over the world. The Gentile church leaves before the time of Jacob's trouble. Romans chapter 11, verse 25 through 27. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery. Although many post-tribbers, all, actually all post-tribbers, are ignorant of this mystery. Lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles become in. What we just read about there in Jeremiah chapter 30. Verse 26, And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written, There shall come out of Zion the Deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. You say, but Israel is actually the church. The church has replaced Israel. Okay, then how does that work? If the church is Israel, then why does it say, so all Israel shall be saved? That's a future event. That hasn't happened yet. If the church is now Israel in the Bible, in the Bible sense, we are the replacement Jews, then why is it that there's a future fulfillment when we're going to be saved? Duh. <laughs> you know, I'm sorry. You know, speak to me with some respect here, Brian. I'm not going to respect you if you're post-trib. If you're post-trib and you've been deceived, well, okay, I'll have a little bit of mercy for you. But if you're out there teaching a post-trib, I'm gonna just I'm gonna just make it plain to you, I'm after you. Okay? I'm gonna come after you and I'm gonna expose you as a dirty liar that you are. You say dirty liar is kind of harsh, isn't it? No, because you see what you're doing is you're trying to take away God's promises to the Jewish people and you're trying to take away the fact that the Lord Jesus Christ himself is a Jew and he's going to come back and rule from one city. And that city is Jerusalem. It's not the United States. It's not some place and mystically where we, we are, you know, type, in type we're already in the kingdom and, and it, you're out of your mind. This book is a Jewish book. Jesus Christ is a Jew. Every man in this thing that's written anything is a Jew. Get irritated with these people. The very fact of the matter is, do Jews, in the time of Jacob's trouble, do they have God to fear? Yeah. What's being written about there in Luke chapter 21 Men's hearts failing them for fear, and the fear that the wrath that comes upon this people, it's coming upon the Jews. You see, right now, Orthodox Jews don't fear God. Right now, they're just like everybody else. I believe I'm going to get in by my good works, and my good deeds, and my prayers, and my whatever else. They're just like anybody else. They don't fear God, but they will in the future. That's the point of the time of Jacob's trouble. God brings fear upon this people, the Jewish people. Why would God bring fear upon his own body? Why would God deceive his own body? Why would God pour out wrath upon his own body? It doesn't make any sense. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 through 18, the famous rapture passage here. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, be very afraid. No, it says, wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Comfort. I'm not afraid of having to face my God's wrath for seven years. And don't give me this nonsense that the wrath only shows up halfway through. Okay, Unleashing the Antichrist on the world, if that's not wrath, I don't know what is. Okay, uh, It starts with the first seal that's opened. God's wrath is the whole way through that thing. God's judgment, his, his pouring out of fury upon this world. Don't fall for this lie, this pre-wrath, you know, post-trib, pre-wrath, all this nonsense, you know. You say, but Brian, I, I still, 
I don't know. I'm just worried. What if? What if? What if? Well, let me just give you a little bit of advice. Don't quit on Jesus Christ taking you out of here because of a bunch of apostates have. Because of a bunch of apostates looking at the world instead of looking to Jesus Christ. And they're starting to get worried about the New World Order and the whole system that's coming in. And they're going to put us in concentration camps. And we're going to be tortured to death. And we're going to be, oh, all this, all, all this bad stuff. We're going to go through the tribulation. Jesus isn't coming back. That's what they're doing. They have forsaken trusting in the Lord. They believe that they're going to have to go through God's wrath. They have a spirit of fear. And what did our scripture say there in 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7? God hath not given us the spirit of fear. So when you see a post-trib preacher, it's not the spirit of God that's leading that man. It's another spirit. A antichrist spirit. Better think about that. 